Well, good day. It is the 27th day of April, already 2021. And this one is going to be on a law enforcement agency, security agency that you've never heard of, but which is a very important agency and uh, has very great benefits, including the federal law enforcement retirement benefit. And most of you know that the United States has a, a wide arsenal of nuclear weapons, the most uh, awesome weapons in the U.S. arsenal. And those are usually deployed uh, throughout the different branches of the military. I think the Coast Guard is probably the only branch that doesn't have nukes. But uh, in our Air Force, we'll have intercontinental ballistic missiles, which are uh, maintained in silos, nuclear missile silos throughout the western United States mostly, and also aboard uh, aircraft, you know, B-52 bombers, um, the, the more modernized bombers that not only have nuclear bombs, but cruise missiles. And those are missiles that have nuclear warheads and are launched from the aircraft. The Navy has submarine-launched ballistic missiles, nuclear subs, which have uh, Polaris missiles and other missiles that can be launched and destroyed enemy ports. Also, our aircraft carriers will have nuclear bombs aboard them that can be launched from Navy aircraft. Army and Marines would have uh, nuclear shells, uh, artillery shells, small yield artillery shells that could be employed. So a lot of nukes, uh, but most of them are not deployed with the forces. Most of them are in storage in various arsenals. So it begs the question, what happens when you have a ship come into port, let's say an aircraft carrier? You're going to take the nuclear weapons off of that carrier or the weapons have to be maintained or replaced while one set is being maintained and uh, maintenance is being done on them. You have to put another set out there. Well, who transports these weapons? Well, up until the mid-1970s, the military did. It was what was called a weapons movement. But starting in the mid-1970s, a new agency of the Department of Energy was created. And that is the National Nuclear Security Administration, NNSA. I bet you've never heard of it. I've never really heard of it. And of that uh, particular agency, there is a specific sub-agency, and that is the Office of Secure Transportation, or OST. I had to look on the sheet to make sure I have it correct. Now, what is the OST? It is a number of federal law enforcement officers, again, under the Department of the Energy, who drive nuclear bombs and components of nuclear bombs from point A to point B. They use a fleet of secure trucks and they travel in convoys, heavily armed convoys. And uh, again, there's not a lot known about them. You've probably never met anyone who's in that, and if they are, they, they wouldn't tell you. And I've never been in it, and I've never met anyone who said that they were in it. But um, it's nevertheless an important job. It's a job where uh, it's a shoot-to-kill <laughs> post. Uh, you don't deal with the public, but if someone tries to rip off a nuclear weapon, well, what do you do? Well, you, you have to defend those weapons with deadly force. If a weapon is stolen by a terrorist group, what do you do? You have to recover it with deadly force. There is no fooling around. So what I'm going to put on right now is a short video that was uh, put out by a news uh, program a couple of years ago. And then we'll, we'll take it from there. Ever wondered what the semi truck next to you on the highway is carrying? It could be more dangerous than you think. News Channel Line's Allison Levine tells us what surprising cargo the federal government ships on highways across America and right through Chattanooga. Drivers do it all the time. Rush past an 18 wheeler on the highway, maybe even accidentally cut them off. But if you knew what those unmarked trucks could be carrying, you may take extra precautions. Orange cones and flashing signs. Warnings of danger easy to spot from miles away. But for drivers on highways across America. We're coming from Indiana and we went down to Florida and now we're going to Kentucky. There's a hidden danger and it could be right next to you. A potentially lethal cargo. 
and there's a good reason you don't know about it. Did you know that the federal government ships nuclear weapons and nuclear weapon components on our highways? No, I did not. Not many do, and the Office of Secure Transportation is charged with keeping it that way. Based out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, OTS and its predecessor agency has been shipping nuclear weapons, nuclear weapon components, and what's called special nuclear material on U.S. interstates for 43 years. I mean, it's really hazardous stuff. According to a map released by the OTS in 2012, Chattanooga is at the crossroads of one of its most popular routes. To me, it's just really downright scary. They're called highway nukes. I don't like that. <laughs> if you haven't heard of them before, it's because in the four decades of the program, there's never been a single incident that would put highway drivers in danger. God forbid if anything would ever happen and, uh, you know, devastation all, all around. The OTS says it takes every precaution. The trucks, not your standard semi. The OTS calls them safeguard transporters. They're unmarked and designed to deter and delay adversaries. That is real scary. I Now that you told me that, <laughs> I'm probably going to stay away from all unmarked trucks. They travel in convoys. While they're supposed to be undetectable, some drivers still spot them. I avoid them. I probably, you know, slow down, just kind of back off of them. And the drivers, not your run of the mill truckers. They're federal agents. Interested in applying? You're going to need experience in high risk armed security work. The specific routes and schedules of the shipments are highly classified. Local law enforcement doesn't even get a heads up when they're coming through. I don't think to anybody would be happy about this. But OTS says that secrecy is necessary when you're charged with defending, recapturing, and recovering the nation's nuclear arsenal. The exact number of shipments coming through Chattanooga is highly classified. OTS estimates it logs over 4.5 million miles every year. That story from Allison Levine. Now, the National Security Administration oversees the Office of Secure Transportation. Both agencies fall under the Department of Energy. To learn more about the history of the program, just go to newschannel9.com. It seems like a lot of the people that they interviewed believed that the bombs could just go off if there was an accident, and of course that's, that's not the case. Uh, nuclear weapons don't operate that way. Uh, nuclear weapons, uh, you have to have a triggering device, and that has to have high explosives, and presumably um, all of that is removed so that it's kept separate. So if the truck you know, is in a bad accident, you're not going to have a, a problem like that. Uh, and those are the weapons would be disarmed, of course, aboard the ship. But still, the loss of a, a, a an intact weapon, uh, or even a smaller uh, triggering weapon, would be a huge, huge security breach. And not only that, you know, the smaller weapon, which is used to trigger, all you would need is a high explosive cork, is their implosion type devices. Well, getting away from that, then, uh, who do they recruit? for these jobs. And they recruit very heavily among former military personnel. Uh, you have to be a minimum of 21 to a maximum of 37 unless you are a military veteran, which event then you are uh, exempted to go beyond the, the 37 year old maximum age limit. Uh, and the first step is your resume submission. The job requires a high school diploma, one year of very high speed armed security at the GS7 level or above. Okay, so the big part on this job, getting this job, is your resume submission. And um, a lot of folks don't know how to properly write up their resume to, to accurately reflect their experience. And I'm going to show you a very brief uh, uh, take from the agency website right now, which um, details this, this issue. And it states specifically that the agency wants you to flesh out in two to three pages your experience. So if you were a squad leader or a platoon sergeant in Iraq, 
don't just write down platoon sergeant, okay? Again, the folks reading these resumes don't know and they, they don't care, okay? You have to tell them what you did. And this will be, uh, let me just use this example right now. This is uh, material put out by the Department of Energy, resume aid, and uh, you can download it. I'll put this in the comments section. But uh, again, it says that writing up your experience, the way you do it, is actually one of the most important things. And uh, actually, you know, the, the, the key thing you have to demonstrate one year full time work experience in an armed position is detailed below. And it should have involved protecting property against theft, sabotage, fire, damage, accident, trespass, maintain law and order, protecting lives. So uh, there you go. Uh, that's what they're looking for. And it provides some resume uh, suggestions. And again, I'm just going to put this in the comment section. And, um, you know, it says here. <laughs> There are many similarities between military operations and nuclear security mission, so do not water down your experience as you might do when applying to civilian positions. An example of this would be taking time to detail your experience within a theater of operations, including assignments such as mounted and dismounted combat patrols, secure convoy operations, and any other security tactical assignments. And it's not uncommon for this resume to be uh, two to three pages in length and uh, keep details about unrelated work experience to a minimum. Okay, so having seen that, uh, what they're looking for, okay, uh, once your resume meets the standard, uh, you will then be invited to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Why Albuquerque? I have no idea. Everything with nuclear weapons starts in New Mexico with Los Alamos and everything else. But they send you to Albuquerque for three days of screening, medical, psychological, I think a PT test, and they start your security clearance, which is a Q security clearance, a very high um, top secret clearance reserved for those in the Department of the Energy. Department of Energy who handled nuclear weapons. Very high security clearance. The medical standards very high, about the equivalent of that of Special Forces, Navy SEALs. If your eyesight is below 2070 without glasses, um, you're disqualified. Any kind of psychological impairment, you're disqualified. Uh, after your security clearance is completed, you're given the job or you're offered the job, you go through an 18-week basic training at Fort Chaffee, Arkansas. And um, I think that basic training would, would combine physical training, classroom training, a lot of shooting, a lot of shooting, a lot of tactical work. And then once on the job, your time will rotate between mission, which is convoy duty, and that lasts usually for a week, going from A to B, and then a week of training, which is you're at home Monday through Friday, you do your training, and uh, while you're on mission, you don't stop at the Hotel 6. You sleep aboard the vehicles that uh, are used for transport. And probably you eat aboard them. I really don't know. I've never been in it. Um, again, I think this program came back around the mid-1970s. This was at the time the United States was developing another nuclear weapon, the MX missile. But the MX missile, as far as I know, in accordance with the treaty obligations that we signed after the or before the Soviet Union collapsed uh, was taken offline by President Reagan. So, um, but the jobs of, of driving these things around and, and doing the escort, those are still online. And, uh, they still hire people for that. And they're supposed to do hiring this month uh, and next month. So keep your eye open on USA Jobs. But the employment itself, it's a lot of road time and a lot of training. And one thing about this job that is not uh, existing in other law enforcement jobs is that you have to remain in shape. If you cannot, if you fall every year, you get a PT test. And if you can't do a mile in eight minutes, you're separated. So there's no 300 pound cops on this job. 
And the other thing, you have to be able to sprint 40 yards in a certain amount of time. I don't know what it is. It, you know, it's not, you know, grease lightning fast, but you got to be able to run fast. So in other words, you have to be fit to fight and you have to maintain that fitness throughout your entire career. And the good news is at 20 years, you can retire just 20 years in this agency and you retire on full benefits. And uh, again, you come in at the GS8, GS9 level. And then as you move up the ranks, um, you get a lot of overtime because you spend a lot of overtime on the road. And all that is factored into your retirement. Uh, the application process will be advertised on USA Jobs. They don't hire very frequently. Uh, and there aren't a whole lot of them, but you know they're, they're, they number in the hundreds, not thousands, but the exact number is, is classified. So this is something that you probably have never heard of but you have to qualify for the GS8 level, which qualifies about E7, E8. You know, roughly the equivalent of a GS grade to military grade. You have to understand how that works. So if you were just an E3 or E4, you're, you're probably in and of itself not gonna qualify for the position. So hopefully this has been somewhat enlightening. You may not have known they existed. Most people don't, but they are supposed to be hiring very soon. So. Uh, you know, if you're interested, uh, this is a great law enforcement job uh, in which you probably won't have a lot of action, but you will have a lot of training. So um, hopefully it's been informative and uh, I have to think of what I'm going to do next. But um, good luck with this if you want it.